So, a great new year to you. Trust that 2024 has gone off to a good start. We are currently under an immense blanket of freezing cold in Western Canada and hoping that we get out from it soon. But hopefully you're able to still enjoy the season and stay warm. So I was just drawn to read Daniel recently and just a thought to launch us into 2024 which may help to pave the way to keep our feet steady on the path as we go. So the beginning of Daniel chapter 1 we're told that Jerusalem and Israel were swamped by a foreign power and the temple was emptied of its valuables and then many of the brightest and best uh, young leaders in the community were also taken away and amongst them was Daniel and his three friends that were renamed Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So <clears throat> the circumstance is that they are in a foreign palace, really in a foreign university, not of their own choice and they're being trained in culture and language and the best learnings of the day. But at the same time they are in enemy territory and they have no real say over the schedule or systems of their own life. So you draw the camera back from that and you think, well what's going on there? Why did God allow this to happen? Then why did God allow that to happen? And it feels like you know, there's almost an abandonment going on when so many terrible circumstances sweep into Jerusalem and Israel and the people of God are scattered or relocated in exile. But I think we can see that although those circumstances on a human level do cause distress, there is also a sense of sovereignty and providence in the whole circumstance. And in particular, when we look at Daniel and we watch how he copes under pressure, I think it's a real testimony to how we're called to live too. So Daniel had no real say over the circumstance of his own life. He didn't choose to be taken away. He didn't choose to be enrolled in a foreign leadership university to serve uh, an enemy uh, monarchy. But he found himself there nonetheless. So what was his response? His response I think is important and interesting because what he does is he it's like he identifies the things in his life that he can control, the things in his life that he does have jurisdiction over. And one of them was his diet. And he implements a regime of discipline inside his own diet. And he says to the fellow who's in charge of the menu in the courts of the king, says, listen, I don't want to eat the lavish food from the king's table. I want you to give me water and vegetables. And so we know that this was met with a great deal of scepticism because the king's table had the best food with the greatest abundance and the most fatty of meats. And that was seen as a sign of riches in the ancient times. If you could put on a lot of weight, then it was because you could probably access a lot of good meat. Um, but Daniel didn't want that. So he took control over his diet and then it's like God honored that. And the diet that he chose, which was sort of a fresh fruits, vegetables, water diet, which might not be the most tasty, but it implemented a level of, I guess, dedication and discipline and control within his own life that was a God-honoring gesture. And the result of that was that he flourished. We're told that he and his friends looked more healthy and radiant than all the other people who were eating the grand food from the king's table. And then as we follow his career through chapter one, he graduates, as it were, with honors and becomes the most esteemed of advisors with the learning that he and his friends have obtained and demonstrate to the king. So again, he doesn't panic, he doesn't collapse, he doesn't lose interest. He focuses with a real dedication and a real commitment and adjusts the things that need to be adjusted to live a more godly life. He takes those little tiny decisions that make a difference and as he does so, God seems to honour him. And so Daniel's path is set to be one where he is esteemed and uh, blessed and beneficial in the royal courts. So we reflect that back onto our own lives and we think, well, maybe all of my circumstances just are what they are. I can't change them all. I can't really choose them all. They are what they are. Most of them are set in place and really are not up for negotiation. But the smaller decisions, the little pieces of discipline or control or um, influence or decision making that we do have, as they are God honoring, they turn our lives in even minimal degrees, but always toward the sun, as it were, always toward God. And as this happens, even though we might find ourselves in difficult circumstances in which we 
can't really see God's providence and yet somehow we need to trust that it underwrites everything. Those little decisions will reinforce in us both the faith that we profess and also the activity of God that we desire to see within us and amongst us. So I think Daniel gives us a really refreshing and important glimpse of faithfulness under pressure, making the little decisions count, um, being loyal to God even in a very difficult place, and trusting God's providence and sovereignty even when he finds himself in enemy territory or we might find ourselves in difficult circumstances. So hopefully an encouragement and a reinforcement of the, the values and faith that we share together as we look toward 2024. Okay, bless you for now. Till next time. Peace.